My name is Dr. Sophocleus. I'm a professor of uh, radiology at uh, Weill um, uh, College of Medicine in the United States. And I practice interventional oncology at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Um, I did finish medical school approximately uh, 23 years ago in Greece, in the University of Athens. And uh, I was very interested in new uh, technologies and treatments for patients. And at the time, I found out that uh, it was very hard in Europe to have uh, image-guided therapies. Uh, specifically, at the time, we were looking for angiography to be performed in a pediatric patient prior to surgery. And I started looking into uh, new modalities, new treatments that they would avoid um, big open surgeries. And I found interventional radiology at the time. And because of the technology and the advancement, uh, at the time, there was no training in Greece, so I was looking into Europe and the United States, and I ended up in the United States uh, where I trained uh, in radiology, and then I did a fellowship in interventional radiology, um, and eventually I even subspecialized to interventional oncology, which basically using imaging to do procedures that otherwise would be done with open surgery. So that's really my subspecialty right now. I treat cancer. Uh, with image-guided therapies, or I make a diagnosis with special needles that take a sample from the tumor, very common, uh, a biopsy that is done by, um, by us with image guidance and special needles, the same way we can treat tumors, and we have many tools that we uh, treat tumors without having to open the patient and do a major surgery. So I think this summarizes uh, my background and what I'm doing on a daily life uh, to answer your question. So uh, you asked me about the uh, uh, establishment of guidelines for global training and global education. Uh, I think that's key. Um, it, it existed in the past in a, in, in a, in a certain level. For example, if you uh, had a medical degree in Europe or in Asia or in another country and you wanted to go to the United States, the United States will mandate that you will pass the local exams like an American citizen. Um, I don't know if that's available globally in other countries. There is a great variability on what is acceptable in each country. But certainly, um, as one of the leaders in interventional oncology, uh, along with other um, uh, leaders that are thinking on how the specialty is evolving, we are certainly um, uh, considering the establishment of guidelines or proper training in this specialty. I know that in Europe, uh, CIRSE, the Cardiovascular Interventional Society um, of Europe, has established a universal uh, diploma for interventional radiology throughout Europe. It's called the EBIR certificate uh, that allows you to have a certificate uh, that allows you to claim the specialty training and practice throughout Europe. Along the same lines, I think it will be extremely important for our societies uh, to get together and maybe establish guidelines for treatment, guidelines for training, and guidelines uh, for educational uh, uh, modules that anybody could do regardless of, of where they are located if we want to improve patient care with the higher standard of education. I think it's extremely important. Uh, especially in interventional oncology, which is a subspecialty of, of interventional radiology at this point. And in the United States, as a matter of fact, interventional radiology is now separated from radiology. It's a freestanding specialty. So interventional oncology certainly becomes, or at least is on the pathway of becoming an individual subspecialty. Um, it's extremely important to understand the alternative treatments and to be able to see each patient in a way that you can offer all different uh, treatments that may be offered by different specialties in a way that you can maximize uh, treatment results and essentially survival, how long patients with cancer will end up living. So yes, multidisciplinary cooperation is essential uh, for the management of most diseases and in particular cancer. I think it's key to be able to uh, have experience and, and 
the traditional pathway we are doing right now is that we were gaining experience by working as a trainee with a very experienced operator and try to learn. So I think having a simulation environment where you can get some experience before you reach the patient is essential and I'm sure that that will be helpful both for patients as well as uh, younger physicians that are going to be trained to treat these patients and of course if you have such a center in the university you can maybe uh, market it so you can also have dedicated sessions for people outside the university that maybe want to train in a certain uh, method in a center technology that experts could use the lab to show how to best do a certain treatment so yes I think it's very useful to have that. Yeah, I think there are a lot of trends in medicine. Targeted therapies, uh, the trend for minimally invasive procedures, whether it's laparoscopic image guidance, minimizing the impact on the body, less morbidity, less hospital stay. Uh, if possible, you want to treat any disease without having to intervene with uh, blood loss procedures, right? So yes, there is certainly a trend for using technology uh, as it advances in computers, in the army, in targeting, in localizing, in everything. There is technology that advancing in many, many fields in technology that are brought into medicine and hopefully in the future, and I think that's the trend in medicine that you're alluding to, we want to treat disease with minimal impact on the human body and minimum downtime because it's not just treating the disease, you want to treat the disease without losing quality of life they go together. So as you see that from a holistic point of view, there is a trend in medicine that we uh, will translate, I believe, in the future generation in using technology to better cure uh, several diseases and many diseases that are deadly, such as cancer, um, becoming chronic diseases that you manage with repeated treatments or with uh, multidisciplinary treatments as you said before as we discussed before where different treatments get together to address a patient locally but also as a whole so yes I think minimally uh, minimally invasive procedures using technology into medicine is the trend and maybe we're going to start seeing new specialties that we're not even aware of at this time I would say to students that are choosing medical uh, school to choose it for the right reason. So the right reason to go to medical school is because you like to have a profession that you interact with people all the time and that you are interested in improving human life, improving the quality of life, alleviating pain and prolonging life with the understanding that birth is associated with death so we want to prolong life but most importantly, we want to prolong good quality of life for a long term. So as long as they have in their mind that they're entering the school with a way to improve uh, the life on earth for human beings, I think they're going to be happy with that choice. If, if they're entering medical school for other reasons, they will find their choice to be problematic because financial uh, reimbursement it's okay in medicine, but it's not going to make you rich. And certainly that's not the gratitude that you get from this profession. It's more the gratitude that you get by treating patients and see that you have been able to contribute positively in their lives.